Hello, everyone. I pray you are blessed. I pray you are doing well. I pray that God is really, really taking care of us. When you pray, You can't really look at what is going on in a sense. As in, let's say you are praying for something. And let's say you are looking for results which are opposite of what is going on now. So when you pray, this may sound like insanity or something, but when you pray, ignore information that goes contrary to what you are praying for. Now, we have to be careful of what we pray for. What we may pray for may be a sin. So if what you are praying for is not a sin, then pray about it and ignore information that goes contrary to what you are praying for. Let's say you are praying for something and it seems impossible for your prayer to be answered, ignore it. What I do I believe I try to pray pretty much every day. So I kind of have a routine to pray every day. So if there is something I want from God, which is something, so I have something right now I want from God, if you remember to pray about it, pray about it every time until you get it. There is something I am praying for. But before this time, I believe things seemed pretty bad. But now, and I believe I have been praying about that thing so much each day, if I remember, and now, things are looking up. I hope this is making sense to you. So does that mean I am going to stop praying about it because things are looking up? No way. No way. Not only do I want to defeat because I believe behind your problems is a demon or demons. You know, you may say your problem is this person or that person, but I believe behind those people, you will find a demon doing something. So, um, what I am praying for, or should I say, I think the correct way of saying it, the thing that I am praying for, it is looking like things are changing for the better. But just because things are changing for the better, I am not going to stop praying about it. I hope this is making sense. Demons still have the ability, if you don't know this, I believe demons still have the ability to mess with what you have been praying for. I believe that is one of the reasons why it is called warfare. Just because things are looking up, I don't think it particularly means that it is always going to stay that way. Meaning that I believe you have to 
stay in the battle. I hope this is really making sense. Okay. If we go to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So, you may pray for something, and things may look like they are getting better, but does that mean you should stop praying about that thing? In my opinion, no, depending on what it is, depending on, yes, I believe depending on what it is. So I am not going to stop praying about that thing. Let me say this too. You may say to yourself, Kevin, I don't think I can pray about something so much. You know, you may say inside of your mind that you are only going to pray about something um, probably at the most once every three months or once every six months or every once in a while, like once every three weeks or something like that. Listen, for me, I believe I have been praying for quite a while. And for me, I don't know much about, I don't know how it is with other people, but constantly praying about a thing, for me, I believe, works so much. Okay. Okay, let's go to Luke chapter. What is it? Let me see. Chapter 18, verses 1 through 18. And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. So. This right here is saying, in essence, we should always to pray. We should always pray and not stop. I believe there is another verse that says, pray without ceasing or something like that. So obviously prayer is very, very important. Verse two, saying there was in a city, a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. Verse three, and there was a widow in the city, in that city, and she came unto him saying, avenge me of mine adversary. So in essence, a widow came to a judge telling the judge, avenge me of my enemy pretty much. Verse four, and he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, though I fear not God. So this is the judge is a person who doesn't, I guess, serve God, nor regard men. Verse five, yet because of this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her lest by her continual coming, she weary me. So the judge is pretty much saying, even though I don't really care about God, I fear not God, let me help this widow because, you know, because if she continues to come to me, okay, so let me help this widow because I believe here it is saying that she continued to come to him. So let me help this widow. I fear not God, but let me help this widow 
because she is making the judge tired by her continuing to come to him. I believe that is what it is trying to say there. Verse 6, And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. Verse 7, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? So in essence, this is telling us, I believe, at least it is telling me, there is purpose in praying about something over and over and over and over and over again. What this is telling me too is to be stubborn in prayer. Not stubborn in attitude in a bad way, but stubborn as in not giving up on what you are praying for to God. I hope this is making sense now. You can tell me, Kevin, I have prayed about a thing five times and I don't think God is going to do it. Why are you only praying about something five times? Why are you only praying about something 10 times? Why are you only praying about something 20 times? You pray about it as many times as long as you know you want to if it's really something you really want keep on praying about it i tend to pray i try to pray an hour a day sometimes i may forget a little but i try to stay within an hour sometimes two or three you know depending on what is going on at that time, but I try to pray an hour a day. If you have a habit in praying an hour a day, and let's say you have an issue, I think praying, forcing yourself to pray an hour a day I am telling you, I believe it is a very good practice, which I believe there are some people who pray more than an hour a day. What verse did I leave off at? I am looking at verse five now, and I believe it is saying pretty much that the judge will avenge her because he doesn't want her. It's either she will, it's either um, she will continue to come to him about the issue or she already has. But I believe it is trying to say that um, he will avenge her because he doesn't want her to continue coming to him about the issue. Yes. So verse 7. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? So what this is saying to me, yeah. So what this is saying to me, that if you are living for Jesus Christ, if people treat you the wrong way, and this kind of correlates with, I um, can't really think of it. I think it is a verse in Romans, but let me say it from right here. Um, so in essence, what verse seven is trying to say if you are living for Jesus Christ, God will avenge you when, I believe, when people do you wrong. But in essence, I believe there is like a, a law, you reap what you sow. So even if you don't serve God, 
And if people are treating you wrongly, I believe the enemy of that person is going to reap what they sow. So I believe when you do bad, bad is going to happen to you. So even if a Christian is treating an atheist wrong, I believe bad things are going to happen to that Christian. So, but in verse seven, it is pretty much saying that God is going to avenge you when you live for him against your enemy, if I am saying that correctly. Verse eight, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when a son of man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. So I hope you get the point of what I am saying in this passage here in Luke 18, one through eight. Never stop praying. Don't let what you see sway you from believing in Jesus Christ. Am I saying that right? Don't let what you see sway you from believing in what you have prayed to God for. I believe demons are very good in deception. So demons, I guess at a time, demons can make it seem like your prayers are useless. They may make it seem like you are wasting your time. See, with faith, you are not going by what you see. You going by what you believe in. What you are believing in for God to do for you. So if you are believing in what God is going to do for you, you should not go by sight to determine if it is going to happen or not. You should not go by advice if it is going to happen or not. As long as you are not praying to God for sinful things, believe that it is going to happen even though you don't have evidence of it, even though you have evidence that goes contrary to what you are believing for. So if you already have what you are believing for, do you need faith for that thing? No. Why? Because you already have it. So if you already have it, you don't need to use faith. So if you don't have it, you need to use faith. So you can't go by your sight, but by faith. Let me stop here. May God bless you.